there was some mercy that drove in us. I was like, try it. I was after my type flag, I see my driveway. I was telling everyone about I was just like trying to cross right here, and I was trying to be really cautious. And that car saw me kind of like gingerly walking across the way. Sorry, sorry. So I didn't know if that was you or not.
check. <clears throat> Just one moment. Wait a second. Don't we, uh, on this one right here, yeah. this one you handed the uh, find. Oh, sorry. This is, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Okay. What's your problem? I have no problem. <laughs> the only problem is inside my own mind. So. All right, buddy, we can start. Thanks, ma'am. He was like, wait for me to, like, let's go already, Chair. Well, two minutes early. Well, that's true. I don't think you'll mind if we're two minutes early today. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Is anybody else out here? All right. Oh, man. I'm a wreck, dude. Well, I had my booster um, yesterday, and uh, I've just been tired. I know, so I was just tired. Okay. All right. All right, we're going to ready to start. Good evening, and welcome to the December 8th Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, may we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So welcome to the December 8th regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting now comes to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Uh, we're going to read from a set agenda that has been published and publicly printed. Um, we will start with a roll call, the approval of the minutes, and then our one appeal that we have tonight. Uh, so we want to start with roll call. Dean Siebert. Present. Rudy Cameron. Here. David Bork. Here. Shelley Stevenson. Here. All right, great. That's everyone. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our last month's meeting, November 11th? I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of head nods. Do I have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes? Uh, Mr. Bork? Yes, I make a motion to approve the minutes of our meeting on, held on November 10th, uh, 2021. Okay. Hi. Oh, hello. Yes, come on in. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yes, this is, our, this is also our board member, Chris, Christine Stowe. Um, excellent. Do I have a second for the minutes? I second. All right. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Karen, what's your vote? Aye. And Mr. Oh. Bork? Yes. And Ms. Shelley? I, am I a voting member tonight? Uh, for this, uh, sure. One, two, three. You, I like everyone to vote anyway okay. for the R, <laughs> yes. just to get used to the practice for it. Um, and uh, Miss Snow, you can abstain if you'd like from this. We're just voting yes, for the I minutes from the last, the minute. last meeting. Yep, so I'll can, abstain. Great, excellent. Uh, the meetings are approved. <laughs> I vote aye as well. Uh, great. So one, two, three, four. Six. So tonight, Shell, you are a non-voting member, and Miss Snow is a voting member tonight. Do I have that correct? Yeah. Year? Yeah. Great. Excellent. I still would. I'm still going to go through the list and ask you to comment on everything, like every other board member, and vote with us as well. Um, it won't count officially, but just to get into the practice of doing so. So our first application tonight is appeal number 2717, a special exception appeal, home, a home occupation uh, by Ms. Rebecca K. Lilly uh, from Two Smart Cookies, LLC, 4 Ridgeway Road, Assessions Map, R054, Lot 2902. Uh, if you'd like to come up to the podium and we'll go through our application, um, you can, we'll, we'll start by uh, you telling us why you're here and a little bit about uh, what you're asking to do. Um, <clears throat> I am here because I'd like to start baking cookies in my home. Um, I've always enjoyed baking and <clears throat> I'm getting, um, looking for something, a creative outlet and baking cookies in my home seems like a good, uh, step to take. And so I'm seeking an appeal to be able to do that. Awesome. Great. Thank you. I guess, do, uh, does anyone have any questions before we start from board members about the application? 
Seems pretty straightforward. We want to allow this person to bake cookies in their home. Seems like a pretty straightforward thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is read through the criteria on the application um, A through F, uh, excuse me, A through I, and you can just read your answers that you provided us okay. into the record. We do this just so that it's recorded if it ever were to be uh, need to be looked at in the future. Uh, a, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or an unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I, I am requesting to use my home kitchen to make cookies. The kitchen will be used as it's currently approved for home use with oven, sink, dishwasher, countertops, and refrigerator with no modifications, and there are no air or water emissions or additional disposal. Great. Uh, letter B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. I do not plan to create an in-home retail location or any additional traffic. One wholesale account has already agreed to retail the cookies and other wholesale accounts may be added. Participating in local farmers markets and craft fairs would provide additional venues for sales. Friends, family, and neighbors whom I already welcome to visit me at my home may decide to purchase cookies to support my business, and it is my preference to conduct any individual sales to strangers at a secure off-site location such as the safe zone area here at the municipal building. Great. Thank you. Letter C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems for which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Using my home kitchen to bake cookies will not create additional public <clears throat> safety problems. Additional concerns or usage of fire and police protection will not be needed. Excellent, thank you. Uh, D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. The business will be conducted in my current kitchen. Great. Letter E, the proposed will, use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood and with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. As all other homes in my neighborhood have existing kitchens already currently in use, this change of use means that I may be spending a little more time in mine. In compliance with the standards for special exceptions in this appeal, there will be no visible signs or of change to the outside of my home. Excellent. And uh, you are not located in the Shoreland Zone? That's correct. Long staff confirmed. Excellent. Uh, letter G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, my husband and myself are the sole owners of the property. My husband is Mark Lilly. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes, I agree to comply <coughs> with and fund any necessary requirements in association with this appeal. Great. And lastly, letter I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. The use of my kitchen to bake cookies will not generate additional noise or hours of operation within my home. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from board members this time, Mr. Bork? Yes, are you on public uh, water and sewer? Yes, I am. Thank you. Great. Um, I guess at this point, would it be appropriate to go to the performance standards? Sure. Okay, so right now, um, we're gonna ask you another series of questions. This is from section nine, performance standards. Um, this is for home occupation. And what I think we'll do, since this is a pretty straightforward application for the board, we'll discuss uh, the, or we'll go through the, each of these questions and answers with the applicant, and we'll just vote once for uh, acceptance of all of these criteria. Do all board members agree? I'm seeing a lot of head nods, and no one's before. Yes, Mr. Longstaff? Or Mr. Karen, sorry. Um, is it a formality to open it to any public records? Um, have you written letter, a letter to the town about this? Oh, I was going to do that after this. Okay. Yep. No, Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, great. Well, we'll start with here then. So there are 12 questions. Not all of them may necessarily pertain, but we have to read through them regardless. Uh, so one, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Correct. My kitchen. Yep. Um, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and 
uh, secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Correct. It's mainly my residence baking Great. is secondary. Excellent. Uh, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. I have no employees. No employees, just by yourself. Uh, exterior signage may be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12, sign regulations, subsection E. So if you would like a sign, you may have a sign. I have no plans for any signs at this point. That's fine. But should you want to have one, you just speak to Mr. Longstaff okay. and he'll, he'll tell you all the details for that. Uh, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, uh, ex except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. Um, and this prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster, tra lobster traps. So you're not going to be need, storing anything outside. I, I won't need any lobster traps, and everything <laughs> will be in my kitchen. All right, thank you. Uh, number six, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Um, no, other than as I use my kitchen now, I suppose the smoke detector could go off on occasion, and I think that's the same with every home kitchen. I think so. Mine goes up every time I bake. Uh, number seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Uh, no, I'm not planning on, again, anyone coming to my home and deliveries uh, would go and pick up items or they'd be delivered by Amazon. There'd be no trucks and things of that nature. Excellent. Uh, number eight, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home may attract during peak operating hours. I have a sufficiently long driveway. Should I have any additional cars? Mine's usually in the garage. Great. Um, uh, that was number, now we're going to number nine. Uh, the home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area uh, provided for the purposes of calculation unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. This is just contained mm -hmm. to your kitchen. And with my calculations that I submitted, um, it's roughly 12%. Yep, excellent, thank you. Uh, home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. Uh, the total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet. It must be totally fully enclosed within the building should you decide to do so in the future. And the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on premises. Uh, and this is, this is relating to seafood, but you don't have any seafood here. No, I don't. Excellent, thank you. Uh, 11, are you a fisherman, lobsterman, or shellfish harvester? No, I am not. Great. And number 12, uh, are you operating any motor vehicle repair or motor vehicle towing business? No, I am not. Great. All right. Um, I'd like to open it to the board for any comments or for this. Uh, no comments. Pretty, it's pretty straightforward here. Uh, nothing too, too complicated. And with one point, I'll, one item I'll mention. Um, because a lot of a lot of times people raise the auto, the issue of traffic, especially with home occupations. But uh, the applicant has clearly stated that it's no more than what is already being generated for folks that come over to her house that she knows. And uh, off there was an offsite location identified for uh, sales to individuals that she does not know. Mr. Chair, I just would like to mention that uh, just for the applicant's uh, benefit and for anybody in the public, it. Should, uh, because the proposal is not indicating any retail sales at the, at the home, should you decide to do that, that would require you to come back to the board again to add that to your, to your home occupation, That's which you can fine. do, yeah. uh, but it does need to be reviewed by the board to add that type of thing to, to, your, uh, to your activity. And that would exclude, like, friends or family that come by to purchase things, yeah, correct? Uh, yeah. We're not really too concerned okay. with that. Uh, yeah. It's if you decide to open up a retail, okay. like that 400 square foot retail space in your home yep. or in an adjacent building to your home, that, that type of thing. Because like then store traffic, traffic and pedestrian vehicular traffic flow is an issue because customers would be coming, going, coming and going. In, in order to supply such a retail operation, I think I would need a commercial kitchen and I'm, I would no longer be in my home So <laughs> for that. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. Um, so what I'm going to do is have a vote for all the items at once, 1 through 12. Does anyone have any objection to that? 
No, then I'll entertain a motion to approve all of the standards as presented and entered into the record. Mr. Bork? Make a motion to approve all standards uh, for this particular application. Home occupation. Great. Mr. Karen? I move to second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bork? Yes. Uh, Ms. Shelley, I'm sorry, what is your <coughs> last name? What's that? Your last name? Oh, Stevenson. Stevenson, I apologize. Yeah, I no had worries. it written down and I lost it. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. I'd, yes. And Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent. And I vote aye as well. So these pass. Now we're going to transition back to um, primary application here. Go through each of these. We'll vote up or down on each one. Uh, and we'll add comments as we see fit for findings of fact. A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I'll start with you, Mr. Karen. Uh, based on the proposed use, I don't see any concerns regarding this. Um, all typical things that could be made in a kitchen, uh, any typical residence. So um, as there's no proposed additional work or construction, I think this is reasonable. Great. Mr. Bork? Uh, regarding the sewage, because of the fact that um, the applicant is on public sewage, it won't have a, a, a significant impact. Okay. Ms. Stevenson? Uh, yep, I, I agree. No impact will be yep. had here. Perfect. Ms. Snow? I see no negative impact. Great. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, letter B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mr. Karen? It was stated tonight that there won't be any sales at the site or additional traffic. Um, any sales uh, for strangers would be, occur off-site, so no concerns with additional traffic concerns. Perfect. Mr. Bork? Uh, there will be some additional traffic, but only simply deliveries and pickups from the normal carriers that are in neighborhoods all the time to everybody's residence anyway. So it doesn't really, it, this will not have any significant impact at all. Great. Ms. Stevenson? Yep, I see no unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic concerns. Great. Ms. Snow? I agree. I see no unsafe Great. pedestrian or vehicle conditions. Excellent. I don't see anything either, as Mr. Board pointed out. Uh, Amazon, UPS, and FedEx deliveries happen every day, so I don't think there'd be any kind of traffic increase uh, outside of that. So seeing uh, no further discussion, all those in favor, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Letter C. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which will be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Mr. Karen? Making cookies uh, in a personal home uh, should not create any concerns or problems with uh, local police or additional fire, uh, especially not in a commercial kitchen. So I don't see any concerns with this. Excellent. Mr. Bork? Agreed, no impact. Ms. Stevenson? Uh, agree, no public safety problems here. Great. Ms. Snow? Aye. Ex I agree. Excellent, excellent. It's hard to come up with additional findings of fact on this one, so I appreciate it. You guys are doing an excellent job. Um, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Mr. Karen? I uh, stated that there won't be any construction outside the home, so no or there would be not be any sedimentation or erosion concerns. And the water supplies are in public um, and typical baking or consumable items, so no concerns there. Great. Mr. Bork? Agreed. Ms. Stevenson? Also agreed. Ms. Uh, Ms. Snow? Agree. Excellent. Mr. Karen, with your vote? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, letter E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Mr. Karen? As the work shared this evening will be occurring in an existing condition, there is no proposed construction inside the home. <coughs> 
The size is compatible with those in the neighborhood, as well as the visual impact. There won't be anything external to the home. Intensity of use, same as cooking for a family or uh, friends, and the proximity will not change to any existing structures. Excellent. Mr. Bork? Uh, there will be no uh, visual impact at all. Ms. Stevenson? Yep. Uh, it's compatible with the neighborhood. Nothing, no changes. Excellent. Ms. Snow? Agree. Excellent. Uh, and the applicants already stated they're not going to be having any uh, signage outside those within their, their right to do so, they've, but they've declined, to, um, they've declined that. So, uh, all those in favor, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, letter F, uh, Mr. Longstaff, you confirm this is not in the shoreland zone? Uh, that is correct. It is not in the shoreline zone. Excellent. Mr. Karen? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. It's a pretty simple one. Uh, G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Ms. Karen? Uh, the application tonight includes uh, information and tax property tax bill indicating the um, owner's use and title to the site, so I don't have any concerns there. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Bork? Agreed. Ms. Stevenson? Also agreed. Ms. Snow? Agreed. Excellent. Yep. They prove that they are the sole owners of the property. All those in favor? Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. And Ms. Snow? Aye. I vote aye as well. Letter H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Mr. Karen? Uh, the applicant, um, for the proposed use of baking cookies in their own um, personal residential kitchen, uh, has shown through the responses and information this evening to have uh, competency and technical ability to make these cookies. Um, and has agreed to comply with any conditions, although um, there have been none proposed yet this evening. Thank you, Mr. Karen. Mr. Bork? Agreed. Uh, it, not likely there will be any proposed um, uh, requirements imposed by the board. Ms. Stevenson? Agreed. Ms. Snow? Agreed. Excellent. I agree as well. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. Excellent. I vote aye as well. <clears throat> Letter I. The proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, Mr. Karen? Uh, with respect to generation of noise, baking cookies internal to the home, um, oven sounds, breaking noises, um, blunders, I think are all common to the neighborhood, uh, existing uses there, um, and hours of operation, um, while not specifically indicated, would still be internal to the home, um, and I don't have any concerns there. Excellent. Mr. Bork? Uh, baking cookies is not something that generates a lot of noise, regardless of the time of the day or night, um, so there's really no impact here. Ms. Stevenson? I see no extra impact as well. Great. Ms. Snow? I agree. Great. This is not an abnormal activity in a residential home. Uh, Mr. Karen, your vote? Aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Uh, and I, Mr. Karen, you reminded me, and then I still forgot. Uh, Mr. Longstaff confirmed there was no public comment, written emails, or phone calls? Uh, no, I did not receive any public comment. I did not receive any public comment, uh, emails, or phone calls on this application. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess, do I have a uh, motion to approve appeal number 2716? Mr. Bork? Yes, I make a motion to uh, approve appeal number 2716, a special exception appeal for home occupation by Rebecca K. Willie at two of DBA2 uh, Smog Cookies, LLC, at Four Bridgeway Road, Excellent. Mr. Karen? I move to a second. Okay, we'll go to our vote. Mr. Karen, how do you vote? I vote aye. Mr. Bork? Aye. Ms. Stevenson? Aye. Ms. Snow? Aye. And I vote aye as well. It passes. So, congratulations. Thank you.
Uh, Mr. Chair, I should yes. interject. I was going to interrupt the board um, when you got to uh, the question about the applicant having technical and financial ability. Uh, it was probably inappropriate, but she has provided uh, some samples for the board <laughs> to prove yes. her technical ability. <laughs> Um, however, it, I think it's best that we waited until the vote was taken, <laughs> just because oh. that could have been a conflict of interest. I it think that was been. an excellent idea. Or thank bias, you, perhaps. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Longstaff. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're in this part. We're in the uh, uh, portion of zone, uh, zoning public comment. Um, typically, in December, we have our election of officers for the next year, um, but we neglected to let everyone know last month because we want to let everyone have a month to you know decide if they want to run for a position. Um, the two positions that are, op are open are vice chair and chair. Um, and what we typically do is uh, take the month to think about it if you'd like to go for that or like to nominate someone for that position. Um, again, typically done in December, but we're going to do this on our first meeting in January. It'll be the first item of business on the agenda. So as soon as the meeting opens and we get past the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll go right into that to elect our new officers and then continue the agenda at that point. Um, at that time, at this point, uh, do you have any questions, Ms. Stevenson or Ms. Snow, about uh, the process? I know we had a pretty straightforward application tonight, but um, it was, uh, if you want to think about who you want to nominate for an officer, um, you can, we, we will address that next, uh, next meeting. Is it a one-year term? It's a one-year term, yep, from January to January, so. Uh, any further comments? Anything from the town, Mr. Longstaff? Um, only uh, that I apologize. I sent out a notice about a training. I didn't read the notice and <laughs> failed to realize it was today, this afternoon, late this afternoon. So, um, uh, and, and I appreciate everybody getting back to me and those that expressed interest. I do, do predict there will be more opportunities this year. MMA, May Municipal Association is very good about providing those trainings at at least a couple of different times of the year. Mm -hmm. and, whether or not they're virtual, I, I expect they'll be still be virtual for a while, but uh, if the numbers continue to uh, go down it, or uh, continue to go up, they'll be virtual f virtual for more than a while. But right. um, if uh, they go the other way, then I, um, they usually like to do those types of trainings in person. It's very good. You get a lot of back and forth with the other folks that are attending. So be on the lookout. We'll try to give you a, a little more notice and uh, hopefully they won't conflict with um, a meeting night as that this past one did. And um, other than that, um, certainly welcome to to uh, Christine. That's great to have a I th well, almost got a full full board, I guess. So I think that's great. And uh, actually, it is a full board. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a full board. Yep. First time in a long time we've had an actual full board. Yes. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, wish everybody happy holidays. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Likewise. Longstaff. Thank you. Um, I would just keep uh, keep an eye on your emails, uh, depending on the cases and and how how far they're spreading. We may go virtual next month. Um, it'll be it'll depend on what the circumstances are. But if we do decide to do so, we have the remote uh, remote policy in your in your books. Um, just read every email that we send, um, and uh, I'll have instructions for that. Um, yeah. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Bork? Motion to adjourn. Excellent. Mr. Karen? I second. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. As, Aye. as unanimous. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.